I'm Nicole King and this is Marbella Now. Hey, hey, it's a brand new This week it is Feria in Marbella, the patron saint of Marbella, San Bernabé. Until Sunday, you can come on down to the Alameda Park and Avenida del Mar and enjoy the daytime fair, which is quite unique and very traditional. And then as of 7 p.m., it goes up to behind the La Caña, the shopping centre in the grounds there for all the fun of the fair. Lots of casetas, lots of great atmosphere, lots of Spanish dancing, music and a real opportunity to become part of what is so important to our city. The Feria de Junio is just like the highlight after Easter, so it would be really nice if you took part too. You don't have to be dressed accordingly, just come on down and have a good time. In the meanwhile, I'm going to be talking about another event that's coming up very soon. It's the In the Park in Benavis. We've just had Lark in the Park and Karen Danzig's Del Sol singers, which is a choir I belong to, perform there. It was spectacular. And the first time I went there was for a tribute to Mel Williams. Karen Danzing sang there too. But Mel, we miss you tremendously. And every time I think of the park, I think of you. A lot of other things remind me too. But today we're going to talk about opera in the park, something that I think is going to be equally as enchanting. And to tell us more, we have Lorraine with us. Hello, Lorraine Powell. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Enjoying the ferry. I saw the fireworks yesterday, which is stupendous. Um, right, Opera in the Park. Um, we had this idea of doing a mini Glyndebourne. Um, and through the Art Society of Ben Havis, we managed to get the beautiful park. And Shane Ashai of Elissimo Events, who I think you're talking to later, uh, is organizing the opera sing as far as so I think it'll be really an enchanting evening. So, and when uh, is this event? It's on Tuesday the 14th, that's in a, nearly a week's time. Just coming up, yes. Coming up, and uh, there's still some tickets left, and we'd love people to... Uh, How do we get tickets? Go. Call me. Call you? Call okay. Me. <laughs> or email me. And is this and, as uh, part of the Rotary Club? Or? No, 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 I'm sorry, is, the Benavides Art Society. This is the Benavides Art Society, and it's the first time they've done anything like this. So you're, um, you've organised yes. this? So hopefully, you know, it'll be an annual event. The first of many, I'm sure. You are very cultural. You get very involved. That's why I get confused. You're part of so many things. The Rotary Club, um, obviously, the Guadalmina, and then you're also very active in so many charities through the Rotary through Club. The Rotary. Through the Rotary. You took on this position with the Art Society, but I, I see it's, it's a lot of work. They put on many, many events. Well, mainly I'm part of the events team, so we've done several trips uh, this year. But also, I'm still part of ACM, and we've just come back from San Luca, the Barameda, uh, when we saw the crossing of El Rocio, and that was really amazing. So that is like very and also after, as typical as it gets. two years of doing nothing, I think the Spaniards are very happy to be out. Well, it's such an emblematic fun. thing, the Feria of the Pueblo. It's a very big deal. You've lived here for many years. I mean, everyone just understands that nothing is going to happen because we're in Feria. So normally we wouldn't have a show. Every, all the cameras are out in the street. Everybody finishes work and goes down to the... Thing. So it's like a, it really is a very cosy thing, as is this event in the park, the opera in the park. It will, I really hope it'll be an enchanted evening. And it's the night of the full moon. And uh, so we should have a good time. And it'd be great if uh, more people came. We've still got some tickets. So we have to contact you to find out a little bit more. Should we get Shane on, the, on yes. stage? OK, Lor don't go away, Lorraine. And uh, Well, actually, we will get Lorraine to go away. But don't you go away, because we're back in just a jiffy. Hey, hey. John's car is still being repaired. So he's delighted that Judy has come to pick him up. However, after a very heavy business trip, he's less than enthusiastic when her car breaks down. I had sure with Linia Director. She tells John. So please do relax, I've got this. And she had. The taxi was there in no time. 
a car safely towed for repairs and a courtesy car readily available. Call Linear Director on 952 14 78 34 to see how they can better your life too. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Hi guys, Ross here from Hoganstan. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And uh, we recommend everybody. Nobody drives drinking. Everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system. And we're proud to sponsor the Zero Hero program. Happy to be Zero Hero Partner. How cool is that? <laughs> GY. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze, and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? Well, as if by magic and the art of television, we now have in the hot seat Shane O'Shea, who I first met through his Incentive Project Music Management. Shane, lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you too, Nicole. Yeah, well, last time together was with the Kingsman Singers when we were at the British Benevolent Fund launch party that yes. Linda Wooden organized and did it, which was a tremendous success, a great association that not many people know about, but it's been around for 100 years. And the Kingsman were there. That was part of the great musicians you bring to the Costa del Sol in this mission that you have <laughs> to provide quality culture for everybody. Yeah, mission philosophy more so, I suppose, than a mission, just diversity. Just bring more of a diverse nature of music to the Costa del Sol. So many people, as you're well aware, live here and really, really crave it. So we just try to bring diverse acts to the Costa del Sol as often as we can. But it's, you fly people in from all over the world. We used to before COVID. <laughs> and obviously COVID put us back quite a, quite a way. We're beginning to get back up to where we were before COVID. We were, we were beginning to make a, a little bit of a reputation for ourselves here on the Costa del Sol. And we operate in Ireland too. Um, but now we kind of, it's like a reboot. And for many people, not, not just us. Everybody. But the Absolutely. Kingsman was a good start back into getting things going. They come over from New York and the kids, the kids, the young, the young men thoroughly enjoyed themselves. And it was lovely for us to have the a cappella act, which is, again, as you say, something different. The opera in the park is going to be enchanting. I've been to the Mel Williams tribute there. The Del Sol singers were at the Lark in the Park the past weekend. But coming up now on the 14th is this fabulous opera. What can we expect? What's the programme? Well, it's titled One Enchanted Evening. And Lorraine Powell, the Benavis Art Society and ourselves collaborate to come up with something special, something, again, unique. So the picnic will start at 7 p.m.-ish until around 9, 9.15 then the opera will take place, well, not a full opera, but opera, opera arias will take place in the amphitheatre from around 9.30 to 10.30. We have a soprano, a tenor and a concert pianist. We're actually hiring in a grand piano for the stage. We have a professional lighting expert to light up the columns at the back or surrounding the amphitheatre to make it look even more beautiful. Uh, the opera arias will last about an hour with a five minute break in the middle half an hour sets. And opening up with something from South Pacific called Some Enchanted Evening, as the opera night is called One Enchanted Evening. So what time should people start arriving? Any time after 7 p.m. OK, so the whole thing, start bringing your picnic, setting up, getting your spot as of 7 p.m. And then like at 9 o'clock is when the performances will start. The performance will start around 9.30. We will give a first call around 9 p.m. to ask people to tidy up. Obviously, we have to leave the park the same way we received it. Uh, 9.15, we'll give a second call and ask people to move into the amphitheatre. If people do come, we do advise they bring cushions. The amphitheatre is quite a, a 
difficult place to sit for a long period of time. But how nice, in the sense you're sitting in a beautiful park in Benavis, in one of this, uh, like, this great place, and might be a little uncomfortable, but yes, do take cushions. Please yes, do, take, do cushions. take cushions. do take cushions. And your, your picnic baskets and friends and sit around and enjoy two hours together. How much does it cost a ticket? 35 euro is entry into the park and to the opera itself. So there, you have to get into the park with a ticket and then you get the further right. access. When you them. contact Lorraine, and I'm sure her number will, will come up as part of this, uh, or her details, she will send you information of how you pay for your ticket. It must be paid for before the event, so there will be no cash sales or any kind of sale on the evening of the, the event itself. There will be a guest list at the door or gate, and uh, a friend, Tom, Tom Thompson, who's also involved in the society, and myself will be at the gate to allow people in and show them some space. Spaces are first come, first served. We're not reserving space for people. So if they have a group of 10, come along, just take your space. But it's enjoy. a big park. I've been it's there and park. it's a big park. There's plenty of room. It's, uh, it's very easy. It's, very, it's a very nice place. It is a lovely place and spacious, as you say. We envisage maybe 90 to 100 people coming along, which so is intimate. beautiful. Which is nice. Absolutely. Not too many people, You're not too much, not too little. That's exactly it. I mean, it's a first for, for what we're trying to do. And again, working within our philosophy of something different to the Costa del Sol. We know it'll work. We know it'll be beautiful. And with that in mind, hopefully we'll maybe do more of them next year, next summer season. Well, I think it's very appropriate for this time of year because I always remember when I was living in Madrid that everybody was out in the evening in the streets. Because it's very hot at home, so to have these pleasant things to do yes. in the evening is really nice, particularly something as romantic and as enchanting as opera in the park. Absolutely. One enchanted evening, yes. It'll be very exciting. Um, the programme, people will know nearly every aria that's on the programme. Some, obviously, opera classics, to maybe some not well-known opera arias, but equally beautiful. So it's a diverse programme within a beautiful evening. What other things have you got going on? You're always so busy. Oh, I don't know where to begin. We've just, re we're back in Ireland again, which is superb, because we've had two and a half years of not being able to do anything there. So now we're building what we do in Ireland again, or rebuilding, and here in Spain. So we have big events, big plans. There are things that are about to hatch that I cannot announce yet, but I hope to come back and, and talk with you about it um, as, as we move forward. Wonderful. Well, really, something not to be missed is the Some Enchanted Evening, the opera in the park in Benavis. Contact Lorraine. She'll get you sorted out with your tickets. 35 euros Tuesday, the 14th of June. So coming up next week. Don't miss out. I think it'll be something uh, well worthwhile. And as you say, if we don't support great initiatives like this, they won't happen again. It's up to us, those of us who like this type of thing, to participate. Well, we're now going to take a quick break, but don't go away, because I'll be back in just a moment. Hey, hey. Zero Hero, welcome here. here. And they now turn in Let the music get to your heart. Let it set you on your way. No time to hesitate. And welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Tearing us apart. Poison arrows shoot straight to your heart. We can change it. Zero Hero, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. is proud to welcome the Zero Heroes. So come on in and enjoy free soft drinks for anyone who is the designated driver. Thank you, Nicole. It's so nice to welcome back familiar faces and Carlos Perujo is certainly one of those. He has done a magnificent job of turning around the Centro Plaza shopping center. It had become dilapidated. It was almost like a huh, has been, could have been, but never really was. That is certainly no longer the, the case. It's vibrant. It's full of great places to go to shop and eat. And I'm delighted that Carlos is joining us briefly just to give us an update on what's going on and what to expect during the summer. Carlos, really, it's always a pleasure to see you. You're such a happy chappy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I try, I try, okay? Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. 
Okay. Well, I, I just love the Central Plaza, and yeah. I know how it was before you started. I have that direct comparable. So I'm really, I, it's a weird thing to say, but I'm proud of you. You've done a really good job, and you smile, and it must have been so difficult, but you smile the whole way through. <laughs> yes, when, uh, you know that the Central Plaza is composed by a small and medium international business, no? for this reason. Uh, we uh, uh, felt um, the pandemic effect, no? But uh, now uh, we're very happy because the situation of Central Plaza uh, to keep uh, uh, before of the, this uh, moment, no? Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, 9,500 uh, percent of occupancy, okay? But it's uh, very good. At the end of this year, uh, we uh, uh, will be uh, to have again at the hundred percent. Okay, which is very impressive because, yes. as I say, how long have you been with the the center? Uh, six years uh, ago, six years ago, uh, it started uh, in. It's gone in quickly, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, a lot of change. Okay, but. It's normal, no? The, the new technology and all is uh, advanced very quickly, very fast, no? In, uh, in the system. Uh, but uh, we have, uh, for example, now we have a lot of uh, novelty, okay? Uh, in uh, business and leisure, no? But you know that Central Plaza is a special shopping center. It is composed uh, 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 of approximately 15% uh, office and 15% uh, um, uh, commercial premise. Between our novelty and uh, leisure, for example, uh, our uh, restaurant start okay, have uh, suffered uh, reforms uh, with a fantastic uh, con uh, conceptual design. Okay, and uh, it's uh, Chef uh, Nico uh, to uh, Nico uh, have uh, has a uh, uh, take care of this opportunity to change the, the menu. But if you, you uh, like the um, uh, if you like the uh, international food and a good service, uh, your start is, uh, is your place. Uh, if you prefer, for example, the healthy food, no and enjoy the best view of Marbella, uh, I recommend you the Paisana, okay, because it's a, a terrace stayed in our Mirador. Okay. The lookout point, yes. which is absolutely, as you say, the views <laughs> are spectacular. Yes. Uh, you can enjoy uh, the, uh, the, the view of the Concha, of the Bay of uh, Marbella, is spectacular, okay? Um, you uh, you are all invited to enjoy our mirador when you want, okay, uh, with a coffee, okay, <laughs> and more uh, novelty. For example, uh, now we have uh, two uh, beauty centers, okay, a style beauty hair and a Mara Sperian. Uh, also, last uh, uh, this uh, last is a luxury Haman too. Okay, but it's a good play uh, for you after, uh, for example, after the, the San Bernabé, uh, after the fair, uh, fair no, it's a, a good play to, to enjoy and relaxing, no? Uh, other, uh, other uh, for example, uh, we have a new uh, anesthetic clinic, uh, Doctora Maria Rosca Clinic, uh, she is a fantastic professional and super uh, funny okay but it's a uh, you have a uh, meet uh, this uh, this person no but during the autumn uh, we will uh, will be have uh, two opening more but in this moment i can uh, see anything about this because it's top secret okay uh, we said that uh, uh, their opening uh, will be a good uh, opportunity for our client. No? On the other hand, uh, our uh, novelty in, uh, in business, okay? uh, for example, uh, this uh, month, several Swedish real estate uh, have opened in um, Central Plaza. No? This sector is having a good evolution, okay, a fantastic evolution, and um, 
uh, uh, the English uh, company, okay, uh, are having a good impact in Centro Plaza too, because, uh, for example, uh, in two weeks, uh, we celebrated the opening of uh, Coffee King, okay, but it's a company to sell coffee and coffee machine to hotel and restaurant. Uh, that uh, it's uh, um, a central office uh, uh, will be a state in the central plaza of Spain, okay. Um, but other company that uh, developed a lot uh, was uh, is, is um, Abbey Wealth, okay. It's, uh, um, uh, they are broken, no, uh, because now its office has. Um, uh, three, uh, two, uh, 300 uh, square meter, but in two months, uh, its office will be have um, a 200 uh, square meter more. Okay, it's fantastic. Uh, uh, after the pandemic, uh, Centro Plaza had more English uh, company, okay, than now, but I, I think that uh, this situation will be better in a short uh, future. Well, the nice thing is that you have yeah. such diversity. <laughs> There's clothes shops, shoe shops, real estate. As you mm -hmm. say, now you can buy industrial coffee machines. But it's, I mean, I love going to Central Plaza. I love eating at Jack's. Yeah. Yes, uh, I mean, it's, it's, like, a, it's, a, it's a classic, you know? It's exactly, it's, it's just like there's certain days it's like it, it just has to be Jack's, you know? They do a great Long Island iced tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Well, it is. It's a. It's a great place. It's nice to see that it's growing so much, and that it really is. You've got so many new businesses incorporating, and as you say, that diversity of nationality. Mm -hmm. It's nice. I mean, we all like. We, you know, even though it's an English-speaking program, a lot of nationalities, and we yeah. all like to see what's out there, yeah. see what other people do. You've got a lovely florist shop there. I mean, it's just everything. Yeah, uh, for me, it's fantastic because I practice English every day, but uh, the English that I speak face to face is very uh, different than they speak they here. No, uh, so are you learning TV. Swedish now oh, as well for your new? Complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's complicated to get a conversation here, no, in, uh, in, on TV. But well, I try. I try. You've okay. done. A, you're doing a, a great job. It really, really. <laughs> Do you still have the markets at the weekend? Yes. Yes. Uh, and now we are ready to to receive the, the visit of chosen of uh, people. No, in summer because always is a good plan uh, for uh, enjoy uh, um, uh, Saturday in the morning uh, between the. Uh, <clears throat> between uh, uh, 10 uh, a.m. and uh, uh, 2 p.m. Okay, but uh, you can because uh, you can find a uh, uh, 300 uh, stand. Okay, but uh, uh, to uh, shop uh, art complement, uh, but. Our street market, okay, is part of the uh, Portuanus uh, street market. Uh, do you know that the street, uh, the Portuanus street market, uh, is composed for uh, four uh, street markets? Yes. <laughs> uh, for example, one of them is a street market celebrated on Pilar Calvo. The second is a street market celebrated around the Bullring. The three uh, markets is to celebrate uh, on the uh, parking area between Berlin, the Centro Plaza, and the end of our street, uh, street market, no? Uh, so it fits in perfectly. Yeah, 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 yeah yes. It's, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, and uh, our street market introduced uh, this year a lot of uh, new stand, okay, for the reason. Uh, you can, uh, you must, uh, or you must know, you have uh, uh, visit uh, us uh, and discover our novelty. Well, it uh, really sounds exciting. I'm very proud for you. I'm very happy for you. And I'm very happy for us in Marbella because the better the businesses are, the better the tourism is, the better we have a nice time. Hashtag better together. Street markets joining together as our community does, do go along to Centro Plaza if you haven't been recently, because it really is great. There's loads of variety. You can spend time there, you can eat there. Really, 
great mirrors, all great views of Marbella. And they're open in the evening too. The restaurants do open in the evening, so do check that out. I'm going to be back in a minute with another guest behind the scenes of Marbella in Feria and enjoying every single moment of every moment. So don't go away. Gracias, Carlos. Thank you. <laughs> in the parking at the moment but it's already filling up So how's it going? Waiting. You've been here yeah, for a bit nervous. I'm waiting for everyone's waiting for everybody to arrive. It's uh, I just want it all to happen and to. Start. You come over from the UK just for this? I just arrived today. Yes, I'm leaving tomorrow. You must be exhausted. I am. <laughs> we just keep going adrenaline. <laughs> but it wouldn't be the same without you. Our fifteenth year here. Thank you, so well, I'm looking forward to everything that's coming. Yes, so please take lots of videos. For us. Oh well, congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Sandro, look at you supporting the cause. I just put another bottle of champagne to give it to them. So it's a uh, 15th year. This is uh, very impressive. Yeah. Well, I will we'll catch up with you a bit later on in the evening. Okay. One. Is, uh, they're not, not here at the moment, they will be here, being sent over by Harry Redner. And it's a shirt from Messi and a shirt from Ronaldo. Yeah. Oh. They will be auctioned a little bit later on tonight. They will be received tonight, but money's going forward to the charity, of course, is extremely important right now. And the shirts will arrive shortly in the post. We're at Via Tiberio, and these lovely young ladies have flown over from the UK just for this evening to perform. Can you introduce yourselves? Yes. I'm Cara. I'm Georgie. I'm Charlotte. And do you perform together? Are you a singing trio? Or are you each are one of you? We are this evening, but normally we are uh, West End performers. Um, Olivier nominated, actually. Yes. Congratulations, um, Charlotte. Um, yes, we will play the roles in, in uh, yeah. West End shows. And I think we've all worked together at, at some, some point, point. Yeah. yeah. So we're all just friends. Can so, you say West End shows? Can we name drop? Yeah, of course. Well, these two have just finished the Sound of Music. Yeah. yeah. I've just finished the Adams Family musical. Yeah. Um, we've we done, done Oklahoma, Oklahoma together. together. <laughs> we've done Heather's. We've done Heather's. Mamma Mia. Yeah. 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 We will rock you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Seen quite a few of them. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I said yes absolutely and I got some friends together we went down and did that evening's entertainment and uh, it was a massive hit and then when Caroline moved to Marbella she said I know it's a big imposition but would you bring some West End talent over to Marbella as well and I thought well okay I will and this is uh, 15 years of doing that. Uh, obviously the last two years we haven't been on uh, because of the pandemic but we're very very happy to be back. Um, all the girls give their time for free, I give my time for free, um, all the expenses are paid for by me so everything goes to the charity and it's my little bit every year for, for the charity and it's a charity I very much believe in. Uh, I know um, Cliff O'Gorman very well and we talked uh, a number of times and um, it's uh, his personal tra tragedy within his family means uh, a lot to me as well because we've had similar problems within our family and it's very important that we get together and support this charity so that other families don't have the same problems in the future. Well it's true if we all do our little bit it makes a big difference and you do a big bit makes a big difference and we're all very grateful. Well, that's very kind of you to say. Absolute delight to meet you. And you. I can't wait to see what's more is coming well, during the evening. Thank God girls. you're not listening to me sing. You're actually <laughs> listening to three amazing women who have amazing careers and amazing voices. And you will recognise them a little bit from television. And uh, so Georgie, for example, was on Tracy Beaker and Britannia High and um, Charlotte has been in the Royal and uh, a number of other shows and uh, Cara Lane um, from Home and Away. So I'm um, the only probably Brit in my bed that doesn't have English television. Yes. And right. haven't done since I've lived here 45 years. So there you go. <laughs> probably the only one who doesn't know who they are. But then there you I go. beg forgiveness, but no, I can no. see that they are really nice young ladies. And I really am delighted that you're all here and looking Thank forward you. to the evening. Thank you. And looking forward to having a fantastic night and great fun afterwards. There will be no alcohol involved. Great night. Look at the people already arriving. It's still very early. Gardens are spectacular. Behind the scenes, we've got Samantha no, here preparing to be Marilyn. Straight to your heart, we can change if we try. Just believe it. Right guys, so I'm the designated driver tonight, so I'm going to choose the Zero Hero place. So all of my soft drinks are for free. And if you want to go somewhere else, just check out the Facebook, Instagram or the ZeroHero.es website for any of the bars, discotheques or restaurants on there. I'm happy to go anywhere you want to go, as long as it's Zero Hero. Magnosis is proud to be a Zero Hero partner. Here we are at Everest. Very cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stickers going up. 
Hey, uh, my name is Govinda. I'm from Everest. Uh, welcome to Zero Hero, to Everest Fusion, to uh, enjoy your cocktails, drinks, and happy hour as well. And food, of course, is delicious. Thank you. <laughs> Perfecto. <laughs> Today is one of those days where we've got guests coming back to the program and I'm particularly delighted to welcome back Sorana Filipescu because she's actually been away away, not in Marbella. I get to see many people off air, but I don't haven't seen Sorana for ages. So welcome back to the program. Thank you, Nicole. And welcome back to Marbella. Thank you, thank you. I'll be happy to be back. It's nice because most of us, a lot of us, we stay here all the time. Leave for a little bit now and then. But you are a lucky girl because you get to travel a lot. Yeah, thank God. And thank God I can also work in different places because I just launched my... Um, clinic in in Marbay in um, Naples oh in Naples in Naples Florida <laughs> so yeah oh, congratulations so, um, I'm ac I everything is ready to start I'm waiting for going back and starting there also to work so that's good because you have different aspects of their life of this life and also different habits and you can learn from this a lot it keeps you actual yes i noticed even when i just went to madrid last weekend for the ambassador invited to the garden party for the queen's jubilee and even just leaving Marbella and going to madrid it was just such like a, a slap like okay things are different yeah we're changing. very it's changing we're very very privileged here, but it's good to leave the fishbowl now and then and just get an idea of what's going on. Yeah, it's refreshing. You're a very comprehensive person in general. I mean, you study all the time. Every time I speak to you, you're studying for another exam. Yeah. And for me, a professional who's involved with health, it's very reassuring that your passion, because you realize it doesn't matter how much you know, there's so much more to complement those studies. You specialize in biomagnetism. Yes. Which is not something everybody knows about. And some people have had experiences that I've heard that maybe weren't so positive quite a few years ago. But again, if you haven't done biomagnetism with Serana, then it's not the same because it's all about energy. It's the uh, magnets. It's all exactly. involved, you and the magnets. Uh, magnetic, uh, biomagnetic therapy involves the magnetic force. That's one of the most important forces in now in all the living beings and uh, it involves the correct placement of magnets on certain points and therefore to achieve an energetical balance um, we use both polarity of magnets that are placed in already defined points where you can find um, where this energetic uh, imbalances are created because the pH in that area is imbalanced pH stand for hydrogen potential and through the use of magnets we actually can shift around those um, hydrogen protons and therefore achieve um, a balance, an energetical balance and a biological balance in those certain organs or areas and um, through this balance you also you manage to have a, a better um, blood flow so you increase circulation it reduces inflammation and uh, by creating those balance those habitat of our good bacteria is reestablished so all the metabolic interchanges can happen correctly and adequately because our body is it's a machine that works when it it, it works properly it has to have certain conditions like the temperature that has to be between 36.5 and 37 and our pH that has to be in the cell 7.0 and uh, outside the cell 7.3 7.4 so the pH of the blood has to be is with this value in order to be neutral now what happens if this pH is altered a lot of pathogen bacteria and microbes appear that weren't there before because as I mentioned the habitat is very important when the habitat is changing all those fauna 
changes. It's take the example of a polar bear that doesn't like the Caribbean climate. It's exactly the same with our good bacteria that are, we have for each cell 10 times more bacteria that actually are uh, responsible for our life, for our di digestion, for our enzyme, for everything, for our life. We are practically, our genome is practically made uh, out of bacteria. And Who'd have thought? <laughs> <laughs> we are practically, practically aliens, no? So when this habitat is changing, the function of those symbiotic bacteria is changing and pathogens appear, pathogens that eliminate toxins, and, and those toxins are responsible for inflammation and for our uh, bad health in this case. So another point of looking at it, uh, what causes, what might cause an uh, pH alteration. A lot of things like emotional states and what we eat, food. That's the most important factor in, in our life. So nutrition is uh, one of the like, cornerstones that I'm, I like, like to study and to go very deep. And now I'm studying uh, functional nutrition that's um, a part, uh, like a different uh, point of view of standard nutrition. It's basically, standard nutrition looks at food groups and uh, taking consideration all those, that nutritional values and how you can eat certain things to prevent or to cure diseases. But uh, functional nutrition, goes a little bit beyond of, of this point of view and looks and takes an individual like a whole, whole from a holistical point of view and uh, takes in consideration the, the genes, the chronic illnesses, their, their, their stress level, their activity. So it's a more complex way of dealing and the focus uh, nutrition in order to achieve their health. It's funny how little we understand in general about such important matters. I always think when I chat with you about a swimming pool, and if we have a swimming pool and the first thing they tell you is get the kit for the pH and test the pH because otherwise you will get all kinds of different things growing in the water yeah. and then all different types of animal and plant life will start flourishing in the water because it's changed their, it, they, they, their habitat. Exactly. And yeah. this is exactly what I'm envisioning with us. And yet we sh never told to check our pH. Why? Why aren't children or at school, the doctor, the GP saying to everybody, here, you know, once a week, check your pH, make sure you're okay. Yeah. Now uh, it doesn't make sense as it's such an important factor. I really don't know. And there are so many questions I don't know how to answer because also in, uh, in medicine schools and they are not teaching you, for, for example, proper nutrition. There's lack of information. And I don't know why because it's so important. We have to start really with the base and uh, after that, like, build our house. So if we don't know uh, the basics, if you think at this point in history, we are so evolved, but one of five of the deaths in the world is caused by lack of nutrition, poor nutrition, lack of nutrients, or excess of calories. So uh, if, if you really realize that what you eat can actually change your DNA expression, change your um, protein uh, expression, you have, then you will really take that in consideration and think what you will put in your mouth. Because nine of ten of the death causes are creating, are uh, attributed to the downstream of our poor nutrition. So that means that diet is the leading cause and the leading, uh, yeah, the leading cause of all those 
uh, chronic diseases in the world. If you equivalent it with, if we have a plant at home that we love, we would water it. Exactly. We wouldn't give it Coca-Cola no. or a Nest tea no. or a no. Sprite or anything like that. We wouldn't give it cups of coffee. So it's kind of curious that for a plant that we would want to look after, we would think exactly what we were giving it. Exactly. And yet for ourselves, we don't seem to value our own being with as much importance as a houseplant. Yes, because sometimes we cannot make the connection between, um, for example, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, or donuts, or refined carbs, and diseases like Alzheimer's or diabetes type 2, that's really a, a epidemic in the world. But right Alzheimer's now. can also be associated with poor diet? Uh, Alzheimer is associated, it's called the third diabetes. It's related all, to all the int carbs intake. It has, a re as nutrition is uh, ever evolving science and dynamic science that relates on all those outcomes of the studies that they are doing. Recently, it has been discovered that all those caloric intake and through carbs and through refined sugars has to do with the apparition, apparition of Alzheimer's, of how glucose and all those, and fructose and sugar is metabolized, and the damage that it does to our brain, it can provoke Alzheimer. There's so many things that come out now that we didn't know. And Knowing this now, what foods could one, should one eat then perhaps to promote the brain functions and cognitive awareness and <laughs> to prevent against getting Alzheimer's as it's come up, would you know? Yeah, of course. I'm all the time when patients come, I'm doing them, uh, I'm, I'm advising them to a healthier diet. And of course, there are some very ground rules and ground concepts like eating less refined carbs, less sugars, eating less processed food, concentrating on, on more whole foods, on real foods. But there are some very like top 10 uh, advices that I would give in order to maintain a healthier life and to try to avoid those genes is expression that uh, will an actually end with a disease. So the first and more important is avoid all kinds of sugars, refined sugars, uh, brown sugars, uh, sweeteners, everything that has to do with sugar. And that means uh, a lot of things of what we eat normally and that what makes us happy. But uh, the good news is that we can find alternatives that can uh, supplement all these needs and cravings for the sweet stuff that makes us happy and gives us and stimulate these revo rewards in our, in our brain. Um, one of the uh, sugars that we should eat instead of real sugar is allulose. Allulose is a type of sugar that uh, it's a type of fructose that doesn't have the metabolic outcomes that fructose has. It's processed in our body, our body absorbs it, but it doesn't metabolize it, it in glucose, so that means that it's virtually zero calories. That means virtually zero calories because it doesn't have any impact of our bl blood sugar, it won't raise our blood sugar, and it won't have any impact on insulin, the hormone that actually uh, helps glucose enter in our cells. So that's a very important thing that we can uh, do. So uh, ev avoid the sugar, eat the sugar types that are uh, better for you, like allulose or natural stevia, organic stevia, or monk fruit, those can really help you maintain a healthier balance with the, your blood sugar, and therefore avoid uh, that your triglycerides or uh, your body store uh, energy in form of, of fat. So there are a lot of uh, implications of that. So that's one point. The other point is uh, avoid gluten. Eat as much as you can gluten-free because gluten is one of the main causes of inflammation in our body. So people that have joint pain or have uh, really digestive troubles, bloating, 
one of the main causes is gluten. And yeah, it seems to be in everything. I'd never even heard the word gluten until you started to have places um, saying, like, Elithioso, actually, in Puente mm -hmm. Romano, one of the first there, where they're gluten-free mm -hmm. and organic, they're gluten this, and what is even is gluten? Mm -hmm. What is gluten? Gluten is the protein of the, of the wheat. So trying, why is it so, uh, nowadays, so important to avoid it? Because all that wheat has been modified modified in order to for the crops to be more uh, productive. productive so this modification has a gene alteration our body when you eat it doesn't recognize it and cannot metabolize metabolize it in a proper way because our genes and our enzymes are structures that we have from millions of years that have been designed to metabolize a certain type of food. Now, when you transform it, it's like, wow, what? Our bodies aren't prepared. Exactly. It's like we, if you think that our life, our, all the evolution of mankind has been made in seven days, we are pra practically now past six days and a half. So we are practically an, like the top of uh, evolution. So our body's already made up. So we have everything that we need. And now put something inside that this old system doesn't recognize it. It's exactly the same like when you ha put gas in your car. And suddenly you put diesel. diesel. Your car is not working anymore. So it's exactly the same with all those transformed and processed food. Our body cannot recognize them properly, so we stuck them, and suddenly we have all these allergies, inflammation, and we don't know where they're coming from. It's from what we eat. It's from what we eat. So we have to be really more aware, without a doubt. Sarana, it's great chatting with you. The time goes by so quickly. The girl really knows her stuff. Biomagnetism, Marbella, I've been there, been so bloated, and I go there and... You meant to go a few times, but I always feel so good after one <laughs> that I forget. And then obviously, and that's not the way to do it. Do go, so you do so many different things. I mean, like, even if it's like pulled knees and yeah. it's amazing the things that actually works on the biomagnetism. 90% of all the ailments can be really uh, improved with magnetic therapy, biomagnetic therapy. So joint pains, digestive problems. Meniscuses uh, and things like that, yeah. even stuff like that. Yeah, because when you find an imbalance, an acidification, you can balance it out and through this magnetic therapy and helping it with nutrition, it's like the perfect pairing. Yeah. Also, which I've discovered from going, the emotions, as you say, our emotional state of mind is very influential. And if you're stressed, that also puts a strain on the body and the whole body reacts differently. Exactly. So you can get that out at the same time while you're there. By balancing out and by helping relax, your body enters into a more... Uh, in a proper way of, uh, it has a proper way of functioning. So eliminating stress, it's also one of the things that can be helped through this therapy. Wonderful. So Rana, thank you so much. Thank you. Pam. And uh, guys, don't go away because I'll be back with Lily Van Tongren. Used to be volunteer with Triple A. She's now the vice president. A lot of stress, a lot of pressure there as well. So many animals. But a few messages of how we can help out pooches during the heat of the summer months. So don't go away. I'll be back in a moment. Gracias, Rana. Thank you. Hey, hey. It's okay. I'm proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. Everyone that comes and wants to join our Zero Hero uh, Association, they will have free uh, non-alcoholic drinks at our venue at any time. Hey, hey. To finish off this week's program, in the heart of Feria in Marbella, which is so exciting. Again, please do get involved from midday till 7 p.m. in Avenida del Mar and the Parque Alameda and then up to behind La Cañada to the grounds there where you've got the fairgrounds and the casetas and all of that. But just to finish off, Lily Van Tongren is joining us. She was a volunteer with AAA, as I said before. She's now vice president. And with all the moves and everything going on, it's really trying 
I would say, challenging. But with all that going on, she's still come to the programme today with a dog who's looking for a home. Perhaps you can help. Lily, lovely to see you. Thank you for taking the time to come. Well, thank you for having me all the time. How's it going, just quickly, with the well, vice presidency <sighs> and the responsibility? And all? Well, it is a bigger responsibility than being a volunteer. And of course, this big move all at once has created a lot of problems uh, logistically, etc., etc. The changeover from one uh, governing board to another governing board, of course, takes also a lot time of time. Also time to settle in. All time to settle in, getting used to each other, getting used to new protocols, etc., etc. But we're working on it and step by step we're going into the right direction. Admirable. A lot of changes have already happened, a lot of positive changes have happened and we continue doing so. Wonderful. Who's the pooch with us today? I've got with me Ricky. She's in foster with me. She is about one year and seven months old. She's of course a podenko, but a beautiful podenko. The colour, the chocolate yes. colours. She, I call stunning. her my chocolate with whipped cream. And um, she's adorable at home. She's good with other dogs. She's good with our cats. Uh, in the city, she's a little bit scared because it's new to her. She comes from the Campo. She was found with another dog. And uh, she's ready for adoption. Healthy, young, about one year, seven months. And waiting for a loving home for people who can spend some time with her to train her not to be scared. Wonderful. So really just a dog that's looking for love, a loving home and someone to take her out for walkies and look yes. after her. Wonderful. With the heat now, walkies. I have to be very careful. Time of day we're walking, touching the pavements and surfaces to make sure they're not burning. And yes, absolutely necessary. First of all, no dogs in cars. People don't realize that when you leave a dog in a car, even if it's for 10 minutes, even with the windows open, it heats up to 50 degrees within 10 minutes and the dog can get a dog stroke or a heat stroke. And uh, walking the dogs, the best way to do is early in the morning, late at night, or on grassy areas because the tarmac gets tremendously hot. The best way to test is either with your own foot or with your hand palm. I do the, that. And the nice thing yeah. is the Paseo in San Pedro, for example, the Paseo Maritimos, are actually very cool. You can either, if you're out, I always touch, I'm always surprised at how cool they are, but tarmac is certainly not. Tarmac is very, very hot very case. quickly. So always test with your own skin to see if it's too hot for you, it's too hot for the dogs. We see regularly burnt feet from dogs. In your home, um, cooling blankets are available, but the easy thing is uh, just to put out wet towels somewhere where the dog can lay if he's not say, staying inside. Um, the dog is losing his heat or he needs to be cooled on his belly, his paws, and the panting, of course, is for him a way of getting rid of the heat. So very important to allow him to pant and to uh, and keep cool them his hydrated. Feet. Water readily available. Lily, Absolutely. thank you very much. And guys, thank you very much. If you want to watch recordings of the show, you can do so from the RTV Marbella website or a quick, easy link from my NicoleKing.es that not only takes you to the RTV website, but also to our Zero Hero website with an ever-increasing list of businesses that are taking part in the project offering free soft drinks to the designated drivers. So that's really nice to be rewarded if you're the designated dri drink driver. Why pay if you don't have to? Also a link to my Marbella Moments column in the Euro Weekly News, which is a great way of also catching up what's going on locally. That's it for me today. Take care of yourselves. Be nice to each other. In November's in La Feria. I'll see you at the fair. Bye for now. <laughs>